Hey, Shalom. All praise is going on unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Kadash. Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai being the true name of the Savior, Rakakodash, meaning Holy Spirit in the true Hebrew language, that belongs to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well through the scriptures, peace of the hopeful elect. On screen it says, The Lion King, be prepared to sing along Disney song, basically, and, uh, you know, Lion King, very popular movie. Uh, with songs, Mufasa, Simba, Scar, and uh, there's a particular song by Scar, and Scar is the um, antagonist, he's the villain. But in his song, it very much applies to the position that the Lord is in right now, the position that the Most High, how he feels and how he thinks. And I was just, uh, one day I was at work just thinking about the song, and, I, and you know, the Spirit came to me like, well, damn, that's the point of view of the Lord. And so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the song, pause it, get some scriptures, make some points. And uh, I'm not going to do the whole song like that when, when after um, reviewing it, watching the songs a couple times, back to back, seeing how I'm going to do the video, whether I'm going to let it play and then let it play again and do the scriptures or whatever. I'm, I've, I'm like, well, you can do, there's verses and um, points that could be made for about 95% of the song. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the... Uh, hit some ones that I feel are more uh, pertinent, more relevant than others. So without further ado. I know that your powers of retention are as wet as a warthog's backside. But thick as you are, pay attention. My words are a matter of pride. It's clear from your vacant expression. The lights are not all on upstairs. But we are talking kings and successions. Even you can't be caught unawares. It says, we're talking kings and successions. Even you can be caught unawares. And that's what's going on, all right? We're talking about the translation from one kingdom unto another with the men of the Lord standing in great boldness like the uh, uh, description and wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter says in the face of who accused us and made no account of our labors when they see it they shall be uh, uh, amazed with great fear you know they got all these things they want to cut the internet off they want to demonize the truth so to speak but when you uh, let me get this uh, scripture in the apocrypha because he said I've been looking up Indian food he said, uh, but we're talking kings and successions. Even you can't be caught unaware. So you got to pay attention, man. You, uh, the, the, the scripture says uh, the son of man going to come like a thief in the night. All right. So some people going, well, the majority of people going to be caught unawares, man. But let me get that uh, scripture. Sirach. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. He says, uh, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So who's the, who has the kingdom now? Psalm 94 and 20, the throne of iniquity. All right, who has it now? The current powers that be, which is E. And because of their what? Unrighteous dealings, their injuries, and their riches got by deceit. What? The, the kingdom is, is, is going to be translated from um, from Esau into Jacob. Like the scripture says, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning that followeth. Now they said it's great that we'll soon be connected 
with the king who will be all time adored. All right. I'm going to read this back in Sirach 2, uh, verse 10 and 2. Uh, no, no, four. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set it. He will set over it one that is profitable. When when Yahweh Shai is restored to his rightful uh, place, as far as the the king of the world, the second um, in command under all creation, and we're going to be connected to him, right? Because we're joint heirs with him. So it's great that we'll soon be connected with a king that'll be all time adored, forever. All time or forever adored, right? But he said, "Well, of course, quid pro quo, you're expected to take certain duties on board. So it's like you gotta, you got uh duties to do, you know. You gotta uh, let me see. First, you gotta first. What's that? Second Peter. You got a." Second Peter 1 and 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, like these the duties, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if things be, if these things be in you and abound, they make ye they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the, in the knowledge of our Lord Yahweh Shemashiach. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Now, uh, uh, it's another scripture which speaks about, let me see, to all coming. See, Salakia. Oh, and then Romans 13 and 1. Uh, is it Romans 13 and 1 or Romans 12 and 1? It, which uh, uh, says, uh, I beseech you, brethren, present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord, holy and, and acceptable. All right? But unto all of them also the... Right, 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 right. Okay. This Second Timothy 4 and 8. Said, henceforth there was a there was laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Alright. That love his appearing, so when he returned. Everybody not gonna love it. It said the scripture says many uh many people shall wail because of him, you know. Okay, let me get that uh Oh, what's that? That Romans, it might have been, it might be twelve and one. Yeah, uh, well, I beseech you, brethren, I, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. That's why I said, of course, quid pro quo, you're expected to take certain duties on board. Like, yeah, okay, you're gonna be connected with the King all time, adored. You're gonna be, uh, uh, uh. He said, the future is littered with prizes. You know, yeah, you're going to receive all of that. You know, the kingdom of heaven, the, the, the glory and all that that come with it. But you got to work towards it. There's things expected of you to receive that. Uh, go back to the video. The future is littered with prizes. And though I may Right, it said, be prepared for the coup of the century. Basically, mean like like the main thing that's associated with the glory and the power of the Lord right now is what the destruction of Egypt. But the scripture said it's gonna come a time where no longer. Matter of fact, the Spirit just gave me the scripture. It's Jeremiah. 
See, no longer will it be talked about the uh, the Lord who destroyed Egypt. It's going to be the land of the north. Shalakia. Mm. Right, right, right. This is Jeremiah 16 and 14. It says, Therefore, behold, the days come of said Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he hath driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. That's likened unto the coup of the century. What Carr said, no, it's going to be, it's going to be the most epic thing imaginable. All right. <clears throat> That was the main inspiration for, for this video. What he just said just now, meticulous uh, planning, tenacity spanning, decades of denial is simply why I'll be king, undisputed, respected, saluted, and seen for the one that I am. I'm going to play it again. Right, because it's all these years, all these decades, all these centuries, the Lord has not been given his honor as the Lord. The Lord has not been respected as, as, as you know, as being served according to the way that he's supposed to be served. But what, when that judgment come, like, like, uh, what is that? Uh, hmm. uh Psalm 9 and 16, the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands, Higion and Salah, right? So when the Lord, uh, when the coup of a century come, and when the Lord come back, all right, with his chariots like a whirlwind, with the, with the thousands of heaven, after the, these prophecies start uh, uh, climaxing, all right, then, you know, then it, uh, it's going to be known. You know, now it's going to be known who's the Lord chosen, then it's going to be known that the finger of God has done this, just like those, uh, just like those uh those sorcerers over there in um in uh, Egypt. All right, I believe it was the plague of lice, but after one of those plagues, they was duplicating them and then one of them, the sorcerer said, "No, nah, this is the thing of the most high." Like, "No." Nah. You know? But this is a psalm. I'll end it with I so like I'll end it with Isaiah chapter 2. It says uh Psalm 2 and 10, enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of Yahweh and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled. Lofty is like pride or, or haughtiness, pride, right? The lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And and Yahweh by Shemihah Shai alone shall be exalted in that day. All right. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read it on down. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. Let me see what's pictures in the Hebrew. Image, ship, craft, meaning dubious. Uh, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low, and Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Alright? 
It says, In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for, where, for wherein is he to be accounted of? So with that, Lord willing, this was a uh, edified election to the hopeful elect. And I want to say abad, uh, abad wa mawath abad, which means destroy and kill Babylon. And we know uh, America right now is the new Babylon and, and, and all the system in which it's, uh, it's, it's branched out and connected to. Shalom.